Well, going into 2024, if no more teams changed conferences, it would no longer be the Pac-12, it would be the Pac-10. So if the conference were to convince Oregon and Washington to stay, and then we're going to add two more teams, what two teams could they add? Let's go. Our Locked On Pac-12, your daily podcast on the Pac-12 Conference. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Locked on Pac-12. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin, D1 play-by-play broadcaster. Thanks for making this your first listen or your first view if you're watching on YouTube of the day. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your number one source to stay, stay up to date with the Conference of Champions. Like, comment, subscribe wherever you're listening to or watching the show. Thank you to everybody who has done so already. This episode is brought to you by BetOnline. BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline where the game starts. And I'll preface this by saying this is Tuesday's episode, but because I will be on vacation in an area that probably won't be uh, overly conducive to doing videos, streaming, and downloading and uploading and such, I am recording this on Friday afternoon before I leave to head back to the Pacific Northwest in the state of Washington, a subject of uh, today's show. Uh, So if something has changed, and you hop in the YouTube comments and say, but what about this piece of information? I've probably seen it, just letting you know, recording ahead of time, but I, I think this will be uh, all right. But things are also changing really, really quickly, so you really never know. So going into 2024, the Pac-12 right now would be the Pac-10. I don't think that's a viable option if you're going to try and convince teams like Oregon and Washington to stay, which uh, at this point in time, again, this is Friday evening, Friday night, really. The sun's just still out, so I think it's evening. Friday night, as I am recording this, uh, July 1st, they, they've been told by the Big Ten, no for now. That, that's my understanding. That's reading reports and, and, and tweets from other people who are covering this sort of, covering this sort of stuff. I am not a journalist. I uh, read other people's opinions, and then I report back to you here on the show, however you're listening or watching right now. But the question on, on my mind right now is, uh, let's say Oregon and Washington stay, and for a couple of years, or at least in the, the near future, it's going to remain that way. That's that's just an assumption, right? It's it's a possible premise. Oregon and Washington are clearly looking at whether or not to join the Big Ten. It's something they're considering, but it has not happened yet. So let's operate under the assumption for today that they would that they would stay. The Pac-12 would not want to go back to being the Pac-10. And I, I think you can be a, a numbered conference if you have more teams than your number indicates. Like the Big Ten has 14 teams. Now they'll have 16 with USC and UCLA. But I don't think it's a great look to go in the other direction where you're the Pac-12, but you actually have 10 teams. And I don't think they want to go back to being the Pac-10 because everyone kind of knows them as the Pac-12 now. They've been that for the past 11 seasons and will be for, for two more at least. So if that's going to happen and George Klyovkov and the, the presidents of the universities and everyone get together, athletic directors, and say, all right, we're going to add two more schools. Where, where can they look? Where should they be looking? I think from the Pac-12's perspective, you're in a really tight spot. I, I mean, there, there's no clear-cut option to slide in and give the conference the same sort of credibility that it has with uh, UCLA and specifically USC from a, a football standpoint, though neither have been you know, what they're capable of the last decade or so. They still have very strong brands and very big media markets in, in the conference right now. So let's start with potential Power 5 teams. And this is speculative on my part, but I think you'd have to look at the Big 12. I mean, going to the Big 10, and by the way, the Big Ten Pac-12 partnership, that seems to be doing the Pac-12 a lot of good right now. Um, yeah, it was just working. But, I mean, if if you, you know, barring a full-on partnership with with the Big 12, not like the one with the Big Ten where you just kind of uh, go back on, on that sort of uh, arrangement or the vibe or mood of that arrangement, um, I, I'm not exactly sure how this could work or if this could work. 
I think the best option that Klyovkov and the Pac-12 have is to try and form a conference together with the Big 12 and and put your best teams together or make a you know a, a mega conference essentially. I mean the Big 12 I think is at 12 or 14 or so and it, I mean that would put you over 20 but kind of seems like that's the direction college football is going. But if you come up short of that, I, I think a couple names that you'd want to watch out for at the Power 5 level, potentially, or, or that Klyovkov at the very least should be interested in, are Oklahoma State and Baylor. Are they mega brands in college football? No. But if you took out USC and UCLA, and you were able to add Oklahoma State and Baylor, again, I'm not saying there's been a report or anything. I'm just looking at the landscape, and you know, if I had a pick of teams that that were to come to the Pac-12 and, you know, help reestablish its legitimacy in some sense. I think Oklahoma State and, and Baylor would be pretty solid options out of the Big 12. I don't think there's anybody since Texas and Oklahoma and Larry Scott wanted to get them. And of course, he did not. They're going to the SEC. And this is precisely why he, he wanted to get them. But I think Oklahoma State and Baylor are, are names that, that would help give your your conference, you know, s- some credibility and, and help stabilize it. I, I, like if you could guarantee if you could go to Oregon and Washington right now and say, hey, yeah, USC and UCLA are leaving, but you two should stick around because we've got Oklahoma State and Baylor coming. I think that's a pretty solid sales pitch. Baylor just won 11 games. Uh, and and beat Ole Miss in I think it was the Sugar Bowl. Yeah, they, they they beat Ole Miss in the Sugar Bowl. They just won the Big 12. Oklahoma State was li- literally I'm not exaggerating that far from getting to the college football playoff last year. Both programs are in a good state. They've both been at a pretty high level. I think Baylor's actually had a season where it was them and TCU like right on the cusp of making the college football playoff. If I remember that correctly. And are, are they as big a brand, either of them, as USC and UCLA? Probably not. I think from a football point of view, uh, those two are actually above UCLA, but they're, they're well below USC. You can't replicate that. But if you looked at a Pac-12 conference, and it'd be weird to have a team from Oklahoma and a team from Texas in there, but hey, weird times. If you looked at the Pac-12 and it was Oregon, Oregon State, Washington, Washington State, Stanford, Cal, Oklahoma State, Baylor, Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, Colorado... I think that keeps you in the credible range. It, it keeps you from, you know, drawing legitimate comparisons to the American conference, right? Or, or feeling like you would be at the, Amer- right? You would still be a step up. Now, whether or not you could get those schools to do it, probably unlikely. But everything needs to be on the table right now. I, I mean, you have to be willing to to pick up the phone and call and at least gauge whether or not the interest is there. And I think those are, those are two programs. And I remember a, a while back, when they were thinking about Pac-12 expansion, this was all before USC and UCLA. I, I've heard Oklahoma State's name thrown out there before. Would they leave the Big 12? Maybe. I, I mean, the Big 12 is not in as dire of a situation as the Pac-12 is right now, but it's not in a great spot either with its two biggest brands leaving. So maybe those programs look around and go, do we want to be the top dogs in a weak conference? Or do we want to join what would be a superior conference? If you put Oklahoma State and Baylor into the Pac-12, you'd be significantly above what you have in the Big 12 because you just wouldn't be left with, with enough teams, with enough programs to match up with what you would then have with Oregon and Utah and Oklahoma State and Baylor and Washington and you know whoever else is kind of – if Stanford can get back to prominence, that would be really good as well. I think there's a number of ways you could go with that, but those are just two teams to me that come to mind that I would say if they came back in, I I wouldn't feel quite as down. Would I still feel a net negative for the Pac-12? Yeah, of course. And is that enough to keep Oregon and Washington around? Hard to say. I haven't spoken with their athletic directors and presidents recently. I have spoken with you recently about Bet Online, your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. See how I slipped that in there. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including Major League Baseball. Go Mariners. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And it's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and my personal favorite golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, where the game starts. The best scenario from a Power 5 level for the Pac-12 
would just be a full on partnership with the Big 12. And maybe you have to give a couple of schools the boot because you can't have, well, but maybe you could have a mega conference. I, I think that's the only scenario where this becomes viable is if you have the Big 12 over here and the Pac 12 over here and you come together. Are you still probably below the caliber of schools in the Big 10 altogether? Yes. But are you in a lot better spot than you would be on an individual level from a conference and team pedigree standpoint? I think the answer to that question is yes. Now, this is a question that came in to the show. And if you ever want a question answered, you tweet the hashtag AskLOP12 or you DM me at Smalls underscore 55 or at LO underscore Pack 12. Hop in the YouTube comments as well. Four ways to get a question answered here on the show by yours truly for all the world to hear. Dan Davis sent this one in and I uh, jotted down some notes about it on, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday, and I was planning to have it for you know a show in the early portion of this week as this episode is dropping right now. And my answer changed a little bit, or the context of it changed, I suppose, uh, but my answer did also change a little bit. And uh, Dan Davis asked, if you had to expand the Pac-12, which two teams would you add? Uh, my note at the time was, well, I, I wouldn't expand the Pac-12. I think it's fine as is. You don't need anybody else. Um, yeah, that, that's that's not the uh, not the correct answer anymore. Uh, so, so what do you want to consider, right? If the Pac-12, I don't know how to call it the 10 or the 12, because there's only 10 teams that are going to be in it confirmed for the 2024 football season. But we're ahead of the 2022 season, which hasn't even started yet. So we'll call it the Pac-12. When you think about what teams to add to uh, the Pac-12 conference, you have to consider kind of whether or not it makes geographical sense. You'd like it to, but the Big Ten is kind of blowing the doors off of that notion a little bit. Does it strengthen the conference's, the, the conference's brand, and will the teams be competitive? So j- thinking back to the last time the Pacific Coast Conference ex- expanded, I don't know if it's actually called that, like, but we all know what I'm trying to say. When the Pac-12 became the Pac-12, I think at the time you could have made a decent case for either Utah or Colorado being a contributor. Utah was coming from the group of five level. They have now become a legitimate player that almost won a Rose Bowl this year, Pac-12 championship. They'd been to the game once before or or twice before, I I believe. Uh, Colorado was coming from the power five level where they had been struggling. So the, the inherent idea that just because a school is coming from you know, the group of five or non-power five level is is somewhat lesser than. I don't think totally holds water. I think it depends on the program. Utah was in the midst of a very good run. Urban Meyer had won a Fiesta Bowl. Kyle Whittingham had had a Sugar Bowl. They both had undefeated seasons. I mean, they were a really good group of five team in the Mountain West Conference. They came to the Pac-12, and it took them a little while to get going, and I think that is uh, partially the drawback. But you, you compare that to Colorado that came, has come over from the Big 12 and aside from one season, has never really gotten going. I mean, they've in 11 tries, they've had two years over 500. One of them was 2020 when they went four and two. And the Buffaloes, unfortunately for Colorado fans, have been known to get off to really good starts. Almost sneezed. Get off to really good starts and then ha- have fallen back a- as the season ha- has gone on. So it's not a total knock on a team to say like, oh, well, they're coming from the group of five. Oh, yeah, well, so did Utah. And they're right now of the teams that are going to remain the second or third biggest brand in the Pac-12 conference behind Oregon and maybe Washington. And I talked about that recently on the show. But right now, Utah's in a much better state of uh, as a program than Washington is. So that, that just leads you to the question, which teams make sense? And the answers to me, uh, of which there are several options, I think you'd have to look at the Mountain West, right? You're not going to be able to go uh, unless you could go get Oklahoma State and Baylor. Like I would take either of them over either of the two schools I'm about to give to you here. But if you can't do that and you have to go to the Mountain West to make it, you know, uh, a truly West Coast based or West Coast ish based conference. The two schools I think you go to after this USC-UCLA move, I think you look at Boise State first, and I think you look at San Diego State. Now, before USC and UCLA had announced this decision, I actually had Utah State above San Diego State as the option. But now I've got Utah State just missing the cut 
along with Fresno State, which would also not be a terrible option. And if BYU had not jumped for the Big 12, that would have been a team that certainly would have made this list. But uh, again, I don't think they're going to come to a different conference after they just initiated a move to uh, a, a new conference in the Big 12. But I had Utah State in there because they just beat Oregon State in a bowl game in the Jimmy Kimmel L.A. Bowl. They finished ranked number 24 in the country. It was just their third time ever finishing in the top 25, but it kind of feels like a program that is is on the ascension a bit in that sense. In that sense, nine seasons in, in the Mountain West Conference. Uh, Utah State has spent, they've had nine or more wins four times. They, they, they're becoming a pretty solid program. They sent a coach to the Power Five level. Matt Wells at Texas Tech comes from Utah State where he had a great run of uh, of success. So I, I think that that feels like a program a little bit on uh, on the rise, and that would be a solid option. But I have them just missing the cut, and I'll get into that. The other team I have just below is Fresno State. They beat UCLA a season ago. They very nearly beat Oregon. They've beaten, I'm pretty sure, other Pac-12 schools in the past. Like, there, there's a little bit of pedigree and, and respect there, and they've had some really good years. The reason I wouldn't have them right there, if you're looking at it from a, a team pedigree standpoint, they've had some bottoming out seasons. They've had some really, really tough years. Um, so that, that sort of inconsistency makes me slightly hesitant. Uh, but they did also just send their head coach to Washington. So uh, there's some ties there. Like maybe that's field, but the two that I'd ultimately land on here, if I were George Klyovkov and look, my first move, as I said, at the start of the show, I'd call Oklahoma state, I'd call Baylor and I'd say, do you want to come over? And then the second call, if they say no, uh, to coming over to the sleepover that I just kind of made that sound like. Um, I would call the commissioner of the Big 12. You call the commissioner of the Big 12, you say, looks like we're going in the direction of the mega conferences. And if that's the case, do you want to make the first one? Do, like, do, do you want to make this happen? If that falls through, then your option is to go to the Mountain West schools. And Boise State, I think, makes the most sense. Now, they're off of a 7-5 and five season, so it might not feel or sound like the flashiest pick. But they're in a, a Western-ish state, right? Idaho, right next to Oregon and Washington. So from a travel standpoint, excuse me. Sorry, I had flank steak. Or uh, was it flank steak? No, tri-tip earlier for dinner. Uh, and it's just catching up to me here. But that's okay because tri-tip from Costco is delicious. So I, I think from that point of view, it makes a lot of sense, right? Boise's already in the geographical footprint of the Pac-12 conference. And the other thing is, Look, would adding them and San Diego State, who I'll get to in a minute, do for you what what having USC and UCLA does? No, of of course not. I, I'm not saying that. But if you're looking at trying to make the best of a bad situation, I think Boise State's a good way to do that from kind of a national perspective standpoint because Boise State is kind of like everybody's original favorite group of five Cinderella upset school. The best sporting event I've ever watched on television. It's probably the Vince Young, Reggie Bush, and Matt Leiner USC National Championship game in uh, 05, 06. Right behind it, the Boise State upset of Oklahoma with the hook and ladder. I, I mean, that was 2007 Fiesta Bowl. I, believe. I mean, that game, if you haven't watched that game in a while, just go watch the end of it. It's bonkers. Oklahoma goes down drives down the field inside two minutes to score. Boise State throws a pick six. Then the hook and ladder gets you to overtime. And then you had trick plays galore from Chris Peterson and company. Um, so I think that they just have that sort of built in at least respect or, you know, semi-prominence to people outside of the region that would help at least somewhat uh, in terms of adding a team and having, you know, other people and writers go, OK, like that's a respectable program. They've beaten Pac-12 teams a number of times over the years. They've beaten, you know, back in their heyday, they beat Oregon State, they beat Oregon. They've uh, I mean, I the, I could go down the list, I'm sure, of uh, Pac-12 schools they've beaten. I haven't looked at all of them, but those ones just popped into my head. Um so I think that's why, even though they're, they're off a seven and five season, never feel like when that's a down year for you in the increasingly strong, though still not fully legit, but like pretty darn good Mountain West. If that's a down year for you, that's a program that you certainly have to take a look at. 
The reason that I landed on San Diego State instead of Utah State, and first of all, there was an argument before this conference shift with USC and UCLA leaving to to have SDSU in over Utah State. One of the other reasons I had the Aggies was because eh, we have four teams in California. Do we really want a fifth? And I, that's kind of where I landed with Fresno as well. But you put another team in the state of Utah, you could have that rivalry build itself up. It's another reason BYU would have made a lot of sense because BYU and Utah have an outstanding Outstanding. I mean, outstanding heated rivalry. BYU finally got a win over them in 2021. Uh, but San Diego State, when you look at the, the history of their program over the last decade, they've had multiple head coaches and they, they win. They win a lot in, in that conference. I, I think you can make a pretty decent case that aside from Boise State's run where they were in the top five nationally every year, San Diego State has been uh, the most consistent program in the Mountain West. So a great tradition of winning. It'd be a great college town as well. San Diego is very Pac-12. I mean, back when the Holiday Bowl was a bigger deal in this conference, going down to San Diego was a really good thing. It was a good bowl game to get. There's great recruits down there as well. Um, But also, San Diego State is in Southern California. And when you're losing, you're not going to get it all back. I I am not here saying that Boise State and San Diego State could replace those two and you could just be right where you were and you'd be fine. I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying your best options available of the ones presented to you, which are certainly not ideal for Klyovkov and his entire administration right now. San Diego State is a, a school that is in Southern California. You have just a lot of people down there. And you have a lot of passionate fans down there. And that's part of what you're losing by seeing USC and UCLA bolt for the Big Ten. It is you're having them go and their fans are going with them. And the market is going with them. Is San Diego as good as LA? No. But it's it's one of the bigger ones you're going to find. And if you're talking about a program that frankly appears ready to make the leap to the Power 5 level... I'm sure I'm not the first person to suggest, even before all this craziness, that San Diego State is someone who could possibly be on the move in that sense. So I think Boise and San Diego State are are the best non-Power 5 options. Before that, I would ask about a mega conference with the Big 12. And before that, I would just ask Oklahoma State and Baylor, do you want to come be a part of the Pac-12? Because... You know, is it as strong as the Big Ten or the SEC? No, but is at least a respectable third and above the ACC right now? Yes, absolutely. But if you went back to 10 teams and you had Oregon and Utah and then waited for someone like Oregon State or Washington, I mean, Washington would be the most likely to rebuild quickly, of course, uh, because of their recruiting potential, or at ASU maybe, if they could get things rolling. Would you rather wait for that? Stanford, maybe? Would you rather wait for one of those schools to do that? Or would you rather be able to to bring in respected, established, legitimate, and you know, very on the cusp of being playoff teams every year, and they would be in the Pac-12 as well programs in Oklahoma State and Baylor? That, that's kind of how I would see it. Uh, but Dan Davis, thank you for the question. That became a lot more interesting after... The big news last week, uh, depending on what my my travel schedule and and plans with everybody looks like, may or may not have a show tomorrow. I, I will do my best to do that. If you have something you want answered, send me a question, and I'll see if I if I can make it happen. Uh, but we'll just kind of see how that all plays out. There are uh, many a golfing and Seattle Mariners based plans uh, this week. As you're listening to the show, I'm probably enjoying one or the other as you watch or listen. I thank all of you for doing that. I will see you next time. And have a wonderful rest of your day.